Starting off early as an illustrator for Lanka Deepa, she saw her simple pictures depicting a magical, childlike sense of wonder grow in popularity. A diligent, hard-working artist, her pictures have appeared in over 200 books, spanning an illustrious five-decade career. A living legend, she has won numerous state literary awards and the prestigious Gratian Prize. ETV Power Women proudly presents Sybil Wetthesinger. Hi, and welcome to ETV Power Women. Um, now, you've heard the introduction to our next guest. She's much loved, incredibly talented, and it's an absolute joy to have her on the show today. Hi, Sybil. Welcome to ETV Power Women. Hi, Minoli. How are you? Oh, fine. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Great. Now, our <coughs> audience at home is probably wondering uh, why we've changed location. But since it's a very special program, uh, we decided to shift location just for this show. <laughs> um, Sybil, I just wanted to ask you, I mean, you have, since <coughs> the age of 18, been illustrating and writing books, and you have this incredible body of work. How did you get into it? What sort of made you start? I really don't know the beginning, yeah. but uh, I think even as a child, I used to love to just keep scribbling uh -huh. and uh, writing odd things. Right. <clears throat> really, at the age of 15, I seriously illustrated a book. Okay, which at, 15. Became, <laughs> at 15. At <laughs> 15, wow. which was very um, well accepted. Yeah. Uh, even the famous uh, Martin Vikramasinghe um, mentioned yeah. that the illustrator of this uh, book uh, will be a wonderful artist and illustrator in the future, which he, he prophesied. Was spot on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And much to my mother's uh, um, discouraging uh, words, you know, she didn't like me to be scribbling because she yeah. had dreams of making me an architect. Okay. And uh, I didn't like to be an architect, although designing was one thing I liked. Yeah. But then the uh, Quantity surveying and things like that. That was just, <laughs> that was not for you. So, yeah, yeah. So, really, at the age of 15, I uh, came across a very interesting uh, couple called Mr. H.D. Sugatapala and his wife. Right. They were head, uh, Mr. Sugatapala was the headmaster of Royal Primary. Okay. But a great lover of arts and his wife. Uh, they saw some pictures my father had exhibited at the Colombo Art Gallery. Yeah. And they came in search of our house and asked oh. my mother whether to get this a book they were compiling oh to be illustrated by me. And she vehemently refused to oh really? do it. <laughs> uh, but they didn't give up. Yeah. They kept on encouraging her to uh, agree to this. Yeah. And, and in the end, my mother said, just one only, and that is all. <laughs> One has gone to now about 200. Two, over 200, <laughs> it's amazing. Yes, yes, amazing because yeah, I, I think I'm, um, I'm born to illustrate and write. Yeah. And then um, one little thing, when I was brought away from my village, I yeah. was really enjoying my village life with yeah. my grandma, um, uh -huh. you know, visiting the forests and bathing in the river and things yeah. like that. Uh, I think I left my uh, childhood there and okay. I really think I belong there, not anywhere else. Okay. So uh, the child in me is what I always think about. Yeah. And if I illustrate, I illustrate my village folk yeah. and all that I that knew life. as a child. Yes. So you kind of keep that life alive really, yeah, through your yeah. illustration. I keep thinking of myself only as a child. Yeah. So I do these books for chil other children. And the uh, greatest thing is I truly enjoy every bit of the work I do, yeah. writing and then creating the pictures for it. Um, and then the great appreciation I get nowadays from children. Yeah. They are really better than the awards that you get. And you've won yeah, several yeah. awards as well. <laughs> yeah, I've won hundreds of awards, but uh, then these are really more valuable, I think, mm -hmm. coming from the mouth of a child, uh, that they like it and uh, it's not influenced. Yeah. So they tell me about each and every book I write yeah. and the language I use and the colors I use. So this is something that 
keeps me truly alive and um, it helps me to go on. And does, yeah, so that sort of inspires you to come mm, up with... Greatly inspiring, yeah. yeah, of course. And you were saying actually earlier when we were having a chat that some of these children come up with, you know, wonderful ideas for storylines that you can mm. kind of take and develop into, yes. into something. Now, so. lots of people teach children art. Yeah. Uh, I'm quite against it because right. uh, children are born with an inborn talent to produce and they are not, uh, they don't uh, paint what they see, yeah. they paint what they imagine right. and coming out, right out of their imagination. Yeah. So they, they live in a truly beautiful fantasy world all their own which is also mine. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then when I talk to children I find here are children, here are my friends, these are the children who give me the inspiration to go on yeah. and uh, when I prolong the conversation they come out with wonderful ideas uh, which I build up into my stories and then when I read it back to them they are thrilled that I have made use of the material they, yeah. they have told me. Which is amazing and actually Sibyl, I wanted to ask you about your first book because this is really what you know you had so much success with Umbrella Thief and oh, was yes. translated into 13 different mm -hmm. languages. Yes. Um, yes. You know, and I'm, tell us a little bit how you came up with that story and how, uh, you know. That's awesome. <laughs> You're going to touch on some romance. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Even because better. when I went to work in Lake House, yes. first I joined uh, Lanka Deepa in 1948, uh -huh. about just after my 18th year, then moved on to Lake House where uh, they were going to start a new newspaper, right. tabloid paper, yeah. and more space to draw and write. Okay. So there I used to be employed as an artist only, uh -huh. but I found there was someone who was more interested in my work than the others. Oh, who really? Who always <laughs> come and comment on my work and um, give me tips on um, my illustrations, uh -huh. how beautiful they are, the lines are wonderful and all that oh, kind wow. of thing. And he happens to be the chief sub-editor of this paper. Okay. Uh, and uh, once he told me, why don't you write a story? So I said, I am not, I don't write story. There was somebody else to write story. Yeah. No, no, but I think you can write. Uh, so for him, in, on invitation, yeah. I wrote a story that I always had in my mind. Yeah. And that was this umbrella thief. Uh -huh. I did an illustration and published it. Wow. The chief editor appeared the next morning at my desk and he says, I want a story like that every day. <laughs> so <laughs> this was kind of a <laughs> punishment, but then I, I loved that idea of, yeah. because my head was full of stories and what to do and uh, I waited for somebody to ask me to do it. Oh. So this um, Umbrella Thief was first published in the Janata. Yeah. Then of course we got married in oh, 1955. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Then uh, we produced this book, uh, this story as a first supplementary reader and it happened to be the very first book with pictures and stories blending together yeah. and it was so well accepted. Uh, there were good reviews written by the late uh, Reggie Silvardana that right. was a book children, all children everywhere should read and it was featured in the English papers and uh, this this book made a mark. Yeah. And, uh, it, it, that was in 1956. Yeah, and it's still something yeah. that, you know... Then is later on, um, in 1982, yeah. I participated in an international illustrators competition organized in Japan yeah. uh, for professional book illustrators. And I did some illustrations for Umbrella Thief and sent it. Yeah. Uh, I got the third prize for wow. this. And uh. then it was uh, very interesting. The, a publisher in Japan said, these are fantastic illustrations, yeah. we want to produce the book. So they, oh my with goodness. my permission, they produced the book. That was in 86. Yeah. And um, I got the best foreign book award published in Japan for Amazing. that. Amazing. Yes, it was so, That's, so good. I mean, what an achievement. And then the following year, the Library Association, children yeah. had to cast a vote yeah. for the most popular book. And that was also Umbrella Thief wow. in 87. So and these things sort of made me think there is no other... Um, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to I do. Want to and this is something I truly enjoyed, yeah. creating these pictures. And then two years later, I think in 1990, uh, this book was published in Norway and Sweden and Denmark. Right. And then Korea and China and <laughs> so United pretty States. much the entire world. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and then 
children used to ask his publisher to get more stories from me. Yeah. So he wrote and told me, please send some more stories. And then I sent a book I had written um, called The Runaway Beard. Okay. So funny story. <laughs> that I was really criticized for writing that story. Oh, really? It's really a mad story. For that is a beard run. And <laughs> these are the elders' point of view. But the children but love still it. still it is uh, yeah. loved by children. It was published in Japan. Yeah. And then, of course, I have now been publishing about eight books for Japan. Yeah. Uh, and because children keep writing to me, they ask, and the publishers are very interested yeah. because it's a different style of illustration, yeah, abs- they tell me. Absolutely. Yes. And like you were saying earlier, it's something where you get to sort of take our culture and, and yes. you know, this is show what people they like. how we live. Yeah. yeah, this is what they like. They, yeah. uh, two, three of those books had been given awards in Japan. Yeah. And when I inquired, they said, this is a new culture. Uh, introduce their children in Japan. Wonderful. Well, we're just going to take a little break, Sybil, um, but don't go anywhere because we've got lots more fascinating conversation <laughs> with Sybil Wet the Singer. We will see you after the break. <laughs> Hi, and welcome back to ETV Power Women. Um, If you've missed the first part of the show, we're having a wonderful chat with the much-loved and incredibly talented Sybil Wet, the singer. Um, It must also be very, it must give you a real sense of pride as well when you see children reading your book and when they speak to you and say, look, you know, this book had an impact on me or it influenced me in some way. I mean, how does that make you feel? Oh, feel very encouraged. Yeah. And then I, very often when I see children read my book, I'm with them. I yeah. feel I'm also a child with them. And uh, about 10 years ago, I didn't want to forget my childhood, which was yeah. the most Im- interesting and the loveliest time of my life was yeah. my childhood yeah. in my village. I wrote a book called The Child in Me. Okay. Yeah which won the Gratian Award yeah. in 95 and it, I wrote it in single also called Venyang Kalu Venyang uh-huh. and children loved that book. Yeah. So many children phone and ask me whether it's a tale that I spun. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fairy story because the things that uh, are included in this, uh, this book, uh, they can't believe that uh, a child has yeah. experienced it. Uh, so this is why I wrote it for the yeah. children to know that there was a childhood like this for somebody like me, and um, so they they had the tendency to visit the village sometimes. Okay. And some people, some children tell their mothers to make a village uh, uh, kitchen like what I have drawn in my yeah. book. <laughs> <laughs> so these things are good. Um, makes you feel happy. Yeah. And what was it like? <coughs> um, you know being a woman in the 50s and working in a sort of newspaper environment, was it predominantly a male-dominated uh, sort of environment or were there lots of women working at that time? No, no, I was the only woman. Okay. okay. <laughs> in the, in, when I joined the newspaper yeah. in 1948. And of course, uh, lots of people uh, encouraged me, yeah. like the famous uh, poet, um, we had uh, W. S. Silva, a great author, uh-huh. and Mr. Manava Singer, who was a great poet, yeah. and then Sunil Shanta, who was a writer, who was a song singer. Yeah. They used to always visit the office for something or other, and when they see this, um, I was somebody in pigtails and uh-huh. before. <laughs> they used to come to me and say, "Stay on, don't go, because you are the only woman here." And we need some women. <laughs> and they really working. encouraged me. Uh, so I was very bold, you know. Yeah. Uh, they, I was. Um, I did only a strip with this tabloid paper with folk poems, uh-huh. and it was uh, well appreciated. Lots of people liked it. And the funniest thing was, I used to uh, sign Sibyl. Yeah. Uh, Sibyl was a qu- kind of foreign name yeah. for these uh, lots uh. of people, singular people. Uh, they used to think it's a man. <laughs> <laughs> they used to come and peep into the office. <laughs> like Those days there was quite a lot of freedom of movement to come and go of anybody. Yeah. Then when they realized it's only a oh, we thought it's a young man writing this. <laughs> anyway, uh, that went on for a long time. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, they didn't think that a woman was capable of doing this kind of work. It has right. to always be a, a man. man. <laughs> well, I think your work definitely speaks for itself. Yeah. And, and also, I mean, the fact that you have won so many awards 
not only in Sri Lanka, but international awards yeah. as well, I think really speaks a lot about your body of work, which is, yeah. as you were saying earlier, over 200 published uh, books. books. Yeah, English singular. And nowadays I get my books translated into Tamil yeah. as well. And then these other languages like uh, Norwegian, Dan Danish and yeah. uh, Swedish. And then once uh, in 2003 I got an invitation to participate in a uh, book festival in Norway. Okay. Uh, so I thought I should go and I went. The girl who was guiding me, she took me to the uh, children's library and they were told that the author of this book will be visiting. Yeah. And they all had a copy of this uh, Umbrella Thief. Oh my goodness. Oh, it was so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine it must have just yeah. been like such a yeah. rush. Unbelievable <laughs> because, I mean, with the, all these books around the world and why is Umbrella Thief so well, well accepted and much loved and still it is, you yeah. know. It's a I think it's just touched of, a chord yeah. in, in both children and adults. Yes. I think it's there's a museum in uh, Japan called yeah. Hiro Art Museum. They make a survey every four years to find out how many uh, accepted book illustrators there are in the whole world. Yeah. Uh, because in other countries like Japan, Czechoslovakia, those countries, uh, book illustrating is a fine art. Yeah. Uh, and they respect a lot the book illustrator. Yeah. So on this survey. The 1990 survey report, they sent with pictures, and then I was turning around, I found my picture oh my and umbrella thief. <laughs> and then, my God, it, there were only 60 illustrators accepted in the, the, world. the world over. Yeah. Last month, they sent the second report that also they had retained umbrella thief, wow. still as the most popular book. Uh, wow. So I don't know, it's like a dream to me yeah, and, and uh, sometimes yeah. these dreams don't come true, but in this case I think my dream has, has come true. true. <laughs> and it's just, it's so wonderful to meet, to meet you actually and just to see how much passion you have. I mean your career has gone, what, over 60 years now and you still have this kind of passion and when we were talking actually earlier, you were saying that there's still so much work mm. that you yeah. have yet to do. Yeah. Um, so where do you get sort of inspiration mm. from? Where I thought does it you come will ask that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you will ask that. I think I, in my life, uh, morning till evening, as the day dawns <laughs> and as I go drop off to sleep, my head is always trying to think of some things to amuse children and amuse me. <laughs> so uh, I think it's my beginning because yeah. it was a fantastic place, my village, and especially my grandma. Yeah. Uh, she used to tell me lots of uh, believable and unbelievable stories, yeah. all ghost stories, uh -huh. um, and all kinds of uh -huh. things which really enlivened my imagination to write. Yeah. Um, so I think on those lines, and my um, head is not accustomed to thinking of in anything else. During the time my husband is no more, but yeah. when he was there, I used to say, you are not serious about anything. <laughs> <laughs> and even my children say now, serious, serious enough about anything, I go on, float. No, no, they are wrong because my head is full of inspiration, yeah. ideas, what next to write and how well it's accepted. And I take tips from children quite yeah. a lot. Uh, so I build up some things and it's most interesting to talk to children. Yeah. They give innovative ideas. And, and they live in this magical yeah, yeah. world. And uh, uh. people don't realize giving children the freedom of speech, how much you can learn from yeah. them. Uh, so I, now I have my grandson and granddaughter living uh, at home with me. Yeah. Mm, the one or two words they talk, that's enough for me to think. And t uh, it takes you yeah, somewhere yeah. else. And they are at a stage now, they criticize my work, they tell me something about my colorways and uh, uh. how to write and what to write. And so they are sort of like consultants. <laughs> 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 Lots of other children also are. But it's wonderful. Yeah. And actually, we're going to just take another little break, Sybil. <laughs> but when we come back, I want to ask you, I want to speak to you about your husband because I know he's featured mm. so prominently in your life and helped you yeah. really kind of yeah. establish your talents as well. So after the break, uh, we're going to have a lot more with the lovely and talented Sybil Webb. So we'll see you.